I quickly ad ad address and answer uh, some of uh, our mail. We get uh, quite a bit of it, and uh, I think we have the greatest audience uh, there, and I'm, I'm so grateful. And some of the questions, these questions were on our own, on our own page, and uh, now, um, and we get these, ladies, so you know, we get these every time uh, I feature one of the women to deliver the word of the Lord here when I'm not here. Now, we never get these comments when uh, bringing Prophetess Floyd or Prophetess Calloway or some invited uh, lady from afar. We don't get uh, these comments with them. And the reason we don't is that those who feel this way probably just don't tune in. But if they watch and they're looking for me, and then there's one of our in-house women of God who are highly anointed. I mean, we've gotten comments from them saying, she's doing a great job, she's really preaching the word, but it's that she's a woman. And so I thought that, that today would be just a good day. Won't take but a minute because I got, I got a message, but to just address this right quick. Because people want to know, um, I'm, I'm glad that what we do here at the upper room we have a thus saith the Lord. Because if it's not of God, it's wrong. You can't make up your own religion and your own rules. Am I right? And so, um, right quick, if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 5, Paul says something. Well, verse 4 and 5 says this. Paul says, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. You know, the head, of, the head of the man is Christ. So every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, he dishonors his head. He dishonors Christ, right? You see that? See that? That's right there, right? The next verse says, but every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonors her head. Her head is her husband. In verse, four, in verse 4, you see Paul speaking of a woman praying and prophesying. Prophesying in the New Testament, that, that is not, it comes from a Greek word that it, it has less to do with foretelling the future and more to do with preaching and teaching the word of the Lord. So you see right here before you, verse 4, he acknowledges that men pray and prophesy. And in verse 5, he acknowledges that women pray and prophesy. So if Paul, and these are Paul's words, so... You know, women do. God does use women that way. In Acts chapter number 2, verse 17, the prophecy is that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And the Bible says that sons and daughters, because we ain't got no trans people in here, sons and daughters shall prophesy. All right? So um, that covers that. Now, uh, I told you I won't take but a minute. I don't have to take but so deep of a, a dive. Um, but if you, if you look at uh, First Timothy, and, and saints, I love doing these things. And I want to say to our audience and, and to you, anyone, anytime you ask me uh, of my why, uh, I'm, I'm elated to tell you. Because the Bible teaches that we should be ready to give every man an answer for the hope that is within us. When they ask, why do you believe what you believe? Then we should be able to answer them. Paul says this in uh, 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 1 Timothy chapter number 2, uh, verse 11 through 14. He says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And he, t he says why. He didn't say because the women are inferior or stupid or dumb or anything like that. He's, he gives his reasons. He bases his reasons on creation. God decided to create Adam first. He says, for the man was first formed, then Eve. All right? And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So what is Paul saying here? Um, first of all, if you study the word woman and the word man uh, in the Greek text, what he's referencing here more than anything else is a husband and a wife. So it would read, let the wife learn in silence with all subjection. 
If you study the word silence, silence does not mean mute. It doesn't mean dumb. It doesn't mean uh, without speaking. I mean, you, you got to know that because the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Uh, uh, everyone is commanded to praise the Lord. Every, and uh, uh, so, you know, if you praise the Lord, you got to say something, right? And so we we don't want no church where the only people praising the Lord are the men, cause half time you brothers won't hardly praise him right. But the sisters will give us a good amen. Am I right, sisters? Yeah. See, see there, see that's proof right there. Am I right, brothers? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so he says here, let the wife learn in. Here's the word that's silence. It's tranquility. Let the wife learn in tranquility with all subjection. And he says, but I suffer not a wife to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. Now, to understand what he's saying here, you have to understand what is meant by usurp. Usurp is to act of, to act, the act of one's self, to act on your own account, to Put yourself where you shouldn't be. We've never had a woman to preach here who usurped this pulpit. I asked and I gave her permission. Or we flew them in. She did not usurp uh, Acts 6-4. They asked for her. As a matter of fact, they sent for her. They bought a ticket. They put up, put up in the hotel. They fed her and, and get blessed her with honor. And did all kinds of things because they wanted her to be there. So she was not usurping authority. She talked to her husband right here before she accepted the appointment because she wanted to know what does my husband, who is my covering, think. And she talked with her pastor, wanting to know, well, what do we think? We, we, we were with one accord. We thought it was a fan, fantastic idea. Sister Keisha is out today preaching. She texted me, reminded me that she had an appointment today, and I sent it back to her. Preach, preach, preach. Let God use you real good. And uh, uh, because people need to hear the word, and they need to hear this kind of gospel. I'm glad to see Sister Evans here. That's probably our busiest, uh, uh, raise your hand, Sister, uh, our busiest evangelist, would you say, distribution? She's going somewhere all the time, preaching the word of the Lord. And when the opportunities come, um, my position is go, let the Lord use you, go, go through the proper channels, do it right. And when you're not, come on back home. Amen. Our district missionary is in the band. People are being blessed. Our supervisor. So, as long as one is not usurping authority over the man, or in this case again, the husband, and again, the word uh, 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 silence is not mute. Plus, you have to keep in mind, this is just a little context, just a little context, I'm gonna wrap this up. At the time Paul wrote this letter, the only ones who were allowed uh, uh, to be educated at the time were men. So this is why she was to learn under her husband because the way that that was society. And I thank God that's not the case today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But that was the case then. So uh, we have, there is no conflict with the written word of God. God did say that he would call uh, men and women to preach the word of the Lord. They also asked me about uh, women pastors, but uh, you can't lump the two in the same group. A, 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 a female preacher and a female pastor is two different things all, all together. See, uh, uh, I believe the biblical model and I believe of the church and the biblical model of the church is that the man is the head of the family. Amen. The church is supposed to be set up like the family. So therefore, uh, I believe that those who are pastors or should be male because the requirements of the episcopos, bishop, pastor, leader, a woman can't fulfill uh, certain of these requirements and she can't be the husband of one wife. Because they're trying it now. But you can't do it. You can't do it. So, uh, to those who would uh, have some concerns 
uh, thank you for them. And we just love hid behind closed doors. God told the woman, told Mary Magdalene, go tell them guys I'm back. Now, I tell you what Jesus didn't do. He said, now you go and you find a man and get him to tell them because since you're a woman, you can't tell them because they won't believe you. You, you. No, I said, go tell them. And she did. And you know, the, one of the most successful preachers in the New Testament, especially in the Gospels, was a woman who had been married five times and the man she was with then wasn't her husband. The woman at the well. And the scripture says that she went, after Jesus got through with her, she went to Samaria and began to preach to all of them and said, come see a man who told me everything I ever did is not this the Christ. The Bible said the men, after they heard her, the men of the city ran and found Jesus and accepted him and then went back to her and said, now we went out to see him because you told us to. Now we know for ourselves that he is the Christ. God used a woman. God uses women. Thank God for the women of our ministry. And ladies, every chance you get. This is usually the stance of the Church of God in Christ, especially what they say in their manual, uh, that women can be evangelists, but they cannot be pastors. I really uh, wrestle with this topic because the Bible, the Holy Scriptures are clear in that a man can be a, a prophet, an apostle, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, uh, a bishop, an elder, all, all of these titles and roles. The Bible is clear from Genesis to Revelations. We have many examples of men in leadership, but what is not clear, I have questions. My first question is, why weren't one of the apostles a woman or a female? My next question would be, the Levites or the descendants of Aaron were men, usually the firstborn. All of the priests were men. My next question is, or statement, women could not even go into the temple during their monthly cycle. Only the high priests, which were men, and only certain priests could enter the Holy of Holies and it could go beyond the veil and do all the sacrifices and rituals that God gave them in Leviticus and in the Old Testament. I just have many questions and it's clear that a bishop and an elder and even they say about a deacon, they're the husband of one wife. You can't change that. You can't, you can't change that. And as far as the woman at the well, uh, she had just met Jesus and perhaps was just converted. She was just, to me, she's just delivering a message. You don't hear any more about her after that. And the women that went to the tomb and saw the angel and would, uh, knew that Jesus arose, to me, they were just giving a testimony or delivering a message. Uh, to me, there are too many questions. And then the fact that, okay, you say women can be an evangelist, but they cannot baptize people. They cannot funeralize people or they can't marry people. Why should people who are called by God to deliver his word have restrictions? Because is it accurate or is it inaccurate? That's the question. But most definitely, we don't have this question about men. Now, I, I love Bishop Iona Locke. May she rest in peace. Bishop Wynell Freeman. Bishop Carolyn Shoel. But I have a problem with women calling themselves a bishop and apostle. I don't think that's appropriate. Juanita Bynum always called herself prophetess. Uh, I think now she's ambassador or overseer. But why are those words in the Bible? I'm kind of concerned. And 
it's just too many questions. I, how do you feel about it? Well, no, what does the word say about it? It's not about how we feel about it. It's what is what does the word of God say about it? And are we rightly dividing the word of truth? There are too many questions. I don't think women belong in the pulpit. You shouldn't be in the pulpit. But give them a podium on the side um, of the church out of the pulpit. Most definitely, they should not be in the pulpit. I remember as a young girl, I went in the pulpit to get the Bible because the choir director told me to go and get the Bible. And what I stood in the spot where my relative preached, and he was a preacher for over 50 years, 60 years, and he's gone on to be with the Lord. My feet were on fire. Now, I was always told that my feet were on fire because I had no business in the pulpit. Okay, that's all fine, well, and good. However, I always interpreted it. Uh, it was a sign to let me know that he was truly a preacher, an apostle, a bishop of the most holy and high God, that he was saved, he was sanctified, sent by God, and given a fivefold ministry. That's why I thought that my feet were on fire, because I was on holy ground, just as Moses took his shoes off. Uh, at the burning bush, and he took his shoes off because he was on holy ground. What are your thoughts? <laughs>